Let us honor our king. Blessed are the people who know the sound of the shofar. In the light of your countenance, O Yahweh, shall they walk. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam. Asher kitshianu b'mitzato v'tzivanu lishmoa kol shofar. Blessed are you, Yahweh, our Elohim, King of the universe, who has sanctified us with his commandments and has commanded us to hear the voice of the shofar. Blessed be his name and his glorious kingdom forever. And Yahweh spoke unto Moses, saying, Speak thou also unto the children of Israel, saying, Verily my Sabbath you shall keep, for it is a sign between me and you throughout your generations, that ye may know that I am Yahweh that doth sanctify you. Wherefore the children of Israel shall keep the Sabbath, to observe the Sabbath throughout their generations for a perpetual covenant. It is a sign between me and the children of Israel forever. For in six days Yahweh made heaven and earth, and on the seventh day he rested and was refreshed. Veshinan tam levaneko, Betty Bartobam, Beshif to Ko, Bevateko, Uvlek to Kovaderek, Uv Shak Bika, Uvikumeko, Ukshatam, Leod al Yudeko, Behayu, the Totafot Bane in Eko, Uktop Tam el Mesazot Beteko, Uvishareko, Behap to Loreko Kamoko. You shall love Yahweh your Elohim with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your might. These words which I am commanding you today shall be on your heart. You shall teach them diligently to your children and shall talk of them when you sit in your house and when you walk by the way and when you lie down and when you rise up. You shall bind them as a sign on your hand and they shall be as frontals on your forehead. You shall write them on the doorpost of your house and on your gates and you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Amen. All right, we're going to have two uh, children, one and then following, because Julia's going to make her maiden voyage today. So Scarlett's going to lead it, and then Julia's going to lead it. Abba, open their eyes and they see your truth. In Jesus' name, amen. Abba, uh, Abba open their and eyes to and see your truth. truth. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen. And all together say, by His grace, not one will be lost. May Yahweh protect and defend you. May He always shield you from shame. May you come to be in Israel a shining.
husbands and wives. Protect and defend you. May Yahweh preserve you His way. Favor them, O oh Yah, with happiness and peace. O oh, hear our Sabbath prayer. I Till I 
shall say before Yahweh your Elohim, I have removed the sacred portion from my house and also have given it to the Levite and the alien, the orphan and the widow, according to all your commandments, which you have commanded me. I have not transgressed or forgotten any of your commandments. I have not eaten of it while mourning, nor offered any of it to the dead. I have listened to the voice of Yahweh, my Elohim. I have done according to all that you have commanded me. Look down from your holy habitation from heaven and bless your people Israel and the ground which you have given us, a land flown with milk and honey, as you swore to our fathers. Amen. For could Adonai humble rock, Baruch Adonai humble rock, Leolam Ba'ed, Baruch Adonai, humble rock, leolam ba'ed. Baruch atah Adonai, Eloheinu melech ha'olam. Asher b'kar b'nu mikol ha'amim. Benatana nu et torato. Baruch atah Adonai, noten ha'torah. Amen. Bless Yahweh the Blessed One. Blessed is Yahweh the Blessed One for all eternity. Blessed are you, O Yahweh, our Elohim, King of the universe, who has chosen us from all peoples and given us his Torah. Blessed are you, O Yah, giver of the Torah. Amen. Amen and amen. Y'all may be seated. So, this ought to be fun. Suffering for righteousness. I said, oh yeah, oh fun, so looking forward to it. Oh really? So anyway... Um, we have been going through the last couple of weeks in this teachings because Hanukkah, the Maccabees, um, is approaching. We've been talking about the story. And in the story, we, we've looked from it from a different angle, not so much a worrying about Antiochus the fourth, but really talking about what happened with the Maccabees. You had a group of people who loved Torah, who was doing the Torah, and you had a lot of Hellenized Jews that was Transjordan. It was Jason and his group that were Hellenized, and then they, they made a pact with Antiochus IV, and you see what has happened with the story. So we've talked about that. So what I wanted to do was, is um, if you would, let's just, um, you don't have to turn here. I'm just going to read a couple of scriptures. We're going to go back to them. And then I'm going to have them put up something on the board. In Acts 9, 16, this was about Paul during his conversion. It said this, For I will show him how much he must suffer for the sake of my name. That's one thing. And in Matthew 5, 12, this is in the Beatitudes. It says, Rejoice and be, <laughs> Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven. For so they persecuted the prophets who were before you. So you see this persecution for righteousness sake. Now, what I did was is here. I have a piece of paper. Does anybody see a black dot on that piece of paper? All right, now that's Methuselah's life. Okay, that's Methuselah's life of 969 years. So our life is just a tenth of that. The white is eternity beyond. So you can see and think about in this world and in this life that we live, we don't have, our lifespan is not very much. Because if Methuselah represents that dot, just think, and I couldn't put our life on there because you couldn't see the dot. Because it would probably be just a, a pinprick of what happens in our life. So in this, we are to be occupying till He comes. We are to be serving Him and worshiping Him 
Look, guys, there's going to be challenges. Every generation has its tribulation. Halisa taught me that years ago. And that is one thing that's really stuck with me. Because guess what? We're not going to bypass that. We're going to have that opportunity. If we live long enough, we're going to have an opportunity to show His glory and His presence and His name great in this earth. So what I want to talk about today is, is because of the Maccabees, really and truly, they were being persecuted for His namesake. They were being persecuted for standing up for the Torah. Because we've been talking about last week, if you remember, it was, it was their own people that turned on their own people. It wasn't the Gentiles that turned on them. It was their own people that turned on their own people. Same thing that's happening today. We talked about these marriage acts. We talked about all of these laws. We talked about all of this stuff the last couple of weeks that's been coming down the pike. Not what was going to happen, what they've already put in legislation and signed into law. And now they're going to have to go fight it in the courts. But this is the same type setting. Where have we seen this before? And so I just wanted to... Also, we're going to put up on the board uh, Maccabees. I just want to read something from the Maccabees. Since I probably know most of y'all don't have Maccabees in your Scripture, so I want to put it up here. This comes from 1 Maccabees 1, 41-53. Now, because of this fighting between these two sects of Judaism, these people, the Hellenized Jews and the ones who are traditional, because of all of their infighting, this came out of this. This was an edict that came down from Antiochus IV. It says, Then the king wrote to his whole kingdom that all should be one people and that all should give up their particular customs or their precepts. All the nations or the Gentiles accept the command of the king. Look what it says next. Many, even in Israel, gladly adopted his religion. Is this not happening today? Is this like us? It's like I'm reading this to where we see this today of what just happened in these marriage acts and all of these things, of what is trying to, where government now is pushing this thing down. Because this is why I was saying it's just not when it says many even from Israel gladly adopted his religion. They sacrificed to idols and profaned the Sabbaths. And the king sent letter by messengers to Jerusalem and to the towns of Judea. So who is he talking to? I mean, he's addressing them. He directed them to follow customs strange to their land. Have we not been doing that for the last few Hundred years? Really? Not say hundreds because we're only about 200 and something years old. But you can see, at least a hundred years old, you can see how the customs in this land has been changing. To forbid burnt offerings and sacrifices and drink offerings in the sanctuary. To us, it could be forbidden to worship Him the way that we desire to worship Him according to Torah. To profane the Sabbaths and festivals. To defile the sanctuary and the priest. Now this come out of this, this civil war between these two people. This edict comes out of that infighting. Remember what we talked about last week? What do we do as, as, as believers over all of these years? When something would come, we would draw a line in the sand and government comes up to our face. We, draw, we drop back and we draw another line in the sand. Cross this. And they come up in your face and you drop back another. Next thing, now, now we're backed against the wall. Now we're where the Maccabees were. We are where the Maccabees were. If you've been keeping up with anything that's going on in our day, in our time, we are where they were at. Now where was I at? Okay, so they're telling them to build altars and sacrifice precincts, shrines for idols, sacrifice swine and other unclean animals, to leave their sons uncircumcised. I mean, he is, he's ripping the heart of the Torah out here. This is, all the, this is everything that's being ripped from these people. They were to make themselves abominable by everything unclean and profane so that they would forget the law and change all the ordinances. 
This is what Hellenization was all about. And you know what? It worked. Because the time of Alexander, when he came in and he Hellenized that region, these are not, these are not Gentiles we're talking about here. These are, these are the Jewish people, the Israelite people that were there that bought into that system. The mixture. The mixture because they could worship. They were not still not worshiping Yahweh at that time. They were, had, they were doing both. They were having all the mixture going on. But guess what? Mixture don't last long. Because when the ugly head rises up, then he's going to say, you're going to do everything I say do. You're not even going to get to do these. Other. You're not even going to bring your... Your, um, yeah, it's a, it's a slow fade and it's, it is on us now. He added, and whatever or whoever does not obey the command of the king shall what? So what is it? What are we talking about here? Suffering for righteousness. They suffered for righteousness because a lot of the Maccabees, they died for their faith. They have a little thing there in Israel for them. You know, to, to remember. We have to remember. This is why history is so important. I'm going to tell you, I'm just going to just say it, and if anybody listening, I don't care. People sometimes... You ever seen them little... You ever seen this little emoji? It's this little brown fellow that's got eyeballs. I'm, look, I'm just telling you, I'm just telling you, this is, I'm at the place because what happens, they, when they take history away from you, you can't see what's happening. You will repeat. That's what the enemy always does. He strips you. We are to learn from history. We're to learn from our mistakes. But when you erase hit history, if you erase, then you're going to repeat the same mistakes in another generation. This has happened here and it's happening with us. This is one thing that I mentioned last week. Think about this. From, say, 165 B.C., okay? This is about the time of the Maccabees. Uh, 64, 61, during this time, okay? From the time of the Maccabees around 165 to, say, Yeshua, when he was 30 years old. So would you take maybe 165 plus 30, because you count backwards. That's what, about 100 and... Is it 195? You know what? I put the number down here, didn't I? Yep, 195. Give that man a Pop-Tart. You know, he got it right. It's full of sugar. Okay, give him an unsweet Pop-Tart. One of this taste-free. So, uh, <laughs> a healthy one. I don't, yeah, I don't want to be... No, I don't bring no celery in here. I can smell it. So... But here's the deal. So 195 years, okay? We're going to go to, we're going to, go to Revelation 13 in just a minute because we're going to hear this language because we, we covered some of Revelation 13 and we're going to go somewhere else. All right, so 195 years. All right, so remember what I said last week? The Civil War. The North and the South. Okay, that was around 1861 to 1865, right? So it ended in 1865. So the math from 2022 minus 1865. What do you got, Keith? That's it. Man, give that dude a, a pack of Pop-Tarts. Oh, I heard that. Very good. There you go. Okay. So 195 years in the Maccabees from the time that that happened to Yeshua. And then look at the Civil War from that time to where we are today. Man, we're from 157 to what, 190? That's really close in years. There's only a few years, maybe 20, 30 years in between this. So this is the reason why I'm paralleling this. To me, this is important. Of what is happening today with Hellenization, what has happened to this country from the time that it was founded even until the time of the Civil War where, who was fighting? In the Civil War, were we fighting the French? Was we fighting the Japanese? Were we fighting the Germans? We were fighting each other. Who were they fighting during this time? They were fighting, brothers were fighting brothers, 
and what they did was, and they caused a civil war that any that where the Seleucids, they they joined them, and then they had to fight the Seleucids. And that's what people do. If I'm going to go fight somebody, I want to join somebody who's got a bigger stick. So the Hellenized Jews went and allied themselves with Antiochus, and then because of that, this came out. And they probably didn't mean for it to come out that far. I don't know. But it changed. And this is what happens in a lot of brothers and sisters. You can see in the Scriptures where Yeshua, whenever He's in the parables and He is talking about brother will hate brother, and you see all of these things, this is not too far removed from His memory. Now, Yeshua's majorly special. But really, history is right there. They knew about this story. They talked about this story. They, this is fresh in their minds of how these people, this, was a, this is a badge of honor for the Maccabees to rise up and beat a big kingdom like this with Yahweh going before them. Only to have Rome show right back up in there. So now can we see really and truly why it was really hard for them whenever Yeshua is on the scene? They wanted somebody, they wanted a Judah the hammer to beat the Romans. They didn't want a Joseph, they wanted a King David. And so you can see what happens here. It's, it's very understandable. If you don't believe that's true, we don't really suffer. We've not really suffered yet economically and all of that. Now, is groceries high as a cat's back? Yes, it is. All of these things is high. But I don't see anybody losing a lot of weight. So the thing about it is, is we know that, that we're still doing okay. Okay, even when the price is of high and we still, I don't see, I can tell you, I don't see people slowing down going to Walmart. I still have to walk across the street to get to the buggy. I mean, they still driving. I'm like, anybody work during the week? Anybody work during the day? Cause, but hey, I'm driving around too. They can say that about me. I'm trying to get stuff for Tammy. But anyway, so with all of this going on, but I'm just saying people ain't slowing down. Uh, uh, you, you, so when does it happen? When does it happen with us? When does it get hard enough to where you end up making a change in your lifestyle? We've been talking about it for the last few years, about growing your own food, about doing everything and getting everything ready. Not conspiracy, not that at all, but getting ready, being wise to be able to know that this day's coming and we're going to read something else in the Scriptures with that. Come on up here, Doc. You asked that question of when does change happen and um, what... I've seen in patients before is that change only happens when, because the change is going to have a lot of pain associated with it, but when that pain is less than the pain you're currently experiencing, that's when change happens. So the current pain, you know, that we're not experiencing enough pain, I guess, in order to change, and how do we, like, uh, discipline ourselves as well as, like, sacrifice in order to change? That's the question that... That's a very... Hey, that's it. Amen. Amen. Because that's usually what happens. It's usually when we get a bad report, things happen. And, and everything changes in the physical and all that. All we're saying is, is spiritually, we better know. Spiritually, we, we've been going through this. We've been Torah teaching and we've been doing this stuff. Our mind has to be made up. Because that day's coming. Because history repeats itself. And I believe, and this is why, I believe 110%, and this is the reason why I said this. There's people in the Hebrew Roots movement, they, they do that little emoji when it comes to Hanukkah and Purim. They throw that out because they say, well, that's just not one of the days that's in Leviticus 23. Well, you know what? Get over it. Because, yeah, Yeshua kept it, and John, he, he recognized it. in John 10, so look, here's what I'm saying. The thing is, is, that's there for a reason. These, these traditions are there for a reason for us to learn from them. That's what Satan wants to do. Satan, he cannot create. My opinion, he can't create. But he can deceive and he is good at it. And he can, he can raise up people because guess what? He raised up Hitler. He used Hitler to do what Hitler did. But guess what? They killed Hitler. So he had Stalin on the other side. It doesn't matter. The next man up. That's just the way it works with these setups. Yeah, go ahead. And those couldn't have been in Leviticus 23 because those events had not happened. Correct. But like Halisa always teaches about it, and it's so true, the seed of those 
is found in the Torah. You're seeing a plant and fruit of that which was originally in Torah. So it's the form and the method may change, but the message has not. It never and changes. And so that's why it's not, it is imperative that we learn from those because Yeshua also, he kept it going. And I think he set the example of having it in John 10. That's right. Because he knew it was imperative and he knew this day was coming and that we too would have to rise up like his forefathers did. All right. Now in Revelation 13, and I'm just going to look at this from a different angle in five through nine, because we talked about last week, we talked about the dragon. We talked about Satan you know, because it said he is in chapter uh, 12. And remember, we talked about there was a beast that came out of the sea and there was a beast that come out of the earth. And remember, Yahweh gave Adam dominion over what? The sea, the sky, and the earth. He gave that dominion over and Satan is now using... But Yeshua, we're taking back that dominion. Amen? And Yeshua is going to take back all of that dominion. So it's just just one way of looking at this scripture in that where these beasts come from. But anyway, but in the wording of this, because even, this is the revelation of Yeshua, but, but John is pinning this down. So as John is pinning this down, you have to also know, now if he's around, uh, and I don't know when the book of Revelation was written. Some say 95, some say 96, some say, what I, I'm not into, I just whatever it is. But if it is around 96 then that's 66 more years later than, say, Yeshua or 65 years or whatever. So you see there's even a bigger gap. So even in this time, it's still fresh in his mind about what happened during this Maccabean period. So in the language, listen at the language. Now what we just read in Maccabees and what actually Antiochus said and he did, listen at the language here of what the beast will do. It says, and the beast will be given a what? A mouth. Big mouth, be given a mouth, uttering haughty and blasphemous words. Is that really what this edict was? Was blasphemous and abominable words of saying that you will sacrifice unclean animals. You will do this. You will not circumcise. You will not bring that to the, the altar. You will defile your altars. You're seeing exactly what happened. That, that happened, guys. This is not, this is not a fairy tale. You know, we're telling you something that happened. And so he's telling you this is going to happen again. So he's, he's using scriptures of the book of Revelation. I know it's written to the nations, but it's written to Israel first. They understand. He understands. This is a language that he knows. And he's saying it in a way to where his people understand they're not having to guess. This is not some parable where they don't understand what's happening here. We have it because we've had all the Hal Lindsay's in our face. We, we're, we're trying to guess what's going on. But now through understanding Torah and understanding the Egypt story and understanding the Maccabee story, understanding the Purim story, you can see the language now of what these people were doing. This is going to happen again. It's just going to be on a bigger scale. So the beast was given a mouth to utterly haughty and blasphemous words, and it was allowed to exercise authority for 42 months. It opens its mouth to utter blasphemies against Elohim, blaspheming His name and His dwelling, that is, those who dwell in heaven. Verse 7, it was allowed to make war with the saints, or on the saints, is that not what happened in the time of the Maccabees? Yahweh allowed that ha to happen and to conquer them. Authorities was given it over every tribe and people and language and nation. And all who dwelled on the earth will worship it. What did, what, did, did not Antiochus put an altar in the temple? Did he not put an altar of Zeus? See, this is this language. What is this worshiping? What is this? He's t the, when, you're, when you're reading this, when you're reading these sections of Scripture, just these from 5 through 9, you could easily be picturing what I just wrote, read to you in Maccabees. You could easily picture of what happened. Where, where did this, who dwelled on the earth and will worship it? 
everyone whose name has not been written before the foundation of the world in the book of life of the Lamb that was slain, it says, if anyone has an ear, let him hear. So he's telling them, this is coming. Where have you seen this before? This is how you recognize what's happening. When you have a society, and this is where I'm going now with the United States of America and the world as a whole. This is a one world economic. This is a one world religion. This is a one world political situation. This is what this is a one world situation. This has been happening. It is happening. They would have liked to have had it happen sooner than it has happened, but they have been emboldened by pushing and saying, you will do this, you will do this, you will do this. There was a judge that wrote something. He's retired. He says, just because you have rights doesn't mean the government won't tell you that you don't have rights or will put it, or will put it in your face. And he's right. Because we have rights according to the Constitution. But you see that that is imploding. And it's just... And guess what? Let's just take America for an example. It's American people. Do you think that everybody in America thinks alike? Everybody in this building don't think alike. And I'm glad because if y'all thought like me, you'd all be nuts. But anyway, but here's the deal. The deal is we all in America, we don't think alike. And because of that, there's ideologies in people. It, it, there, is no, there is none of this coexist. You can forget that. That is a forest. That, that there is is to get you to not beat me up until I come to their way of thinking. That's all coexist means. The thing about it is, is I don't, have an opinion I want Yahweh's opinion I want his word his Torah this is why when I said before I want true revival I want true restoration because if we have it spiritually we will go back to Shabbat we will go back to the feast and festivals we are not about putting Christ back in Christmas that is not what this is about it's just not because that was not something that we were commanded to do. That is full of mixture. And, that is, and that's what Satan does. He, he comes to change times in law. And he's been doing it over generations. And he's now, he has done it. What the Father, whatever happened in the third century, we're, we've been given dominion. We talked about that through Yeshua. We've been given dominion. What do you, you have to, you have to take dominion what's under your feet first. That's what Steve Hosteller said last week in his, in his portion. If you can't take dominion under your feet, you can forget taking dominion out there. You have to take dominion here all the way up to the heavens. When you take this part, then you can take, then you take ground here next. And we as a people, as we move and we march through this, this is how you take dominion. This is what the Maccabees did. They took dominion where they were at. And then they went out from there into these other places and they took dominion and they was Why? Because Yahweh was with them. Amen. You have something? Get it on mic. Because I know it's going to be good. If it ain't good, we'll, we'll edit it. Well, if we're going to decide to take dominion, we have to do what we talked about last week too. That is to declare ourselves as a free agent before the creator of the universe and act like we're free agents. Amen. Because if I'm still walking around in that prison of darkness, there's no way I can make an impact on my world around me. Correct. I have to be that free agent. I have to come out from under that bondage that we're in in order to declare what we need to declare that we are his subjects representing him on the planet today. Amen. Be free. Amen. Because see, here's what he's saying too. Why, why did not the people of Israel remain in Egypt and just go out three days and worship and just have Yahweh as their king and then be, because Pharaoh was still their God. Pharaoh was still, he had to remove them out of Egypt so that they would be free to worship. This happened to us at one time. 
But what we did was we didn't keep what He blessed us with. The children of Israel, they walked into a land. He gave them a land. And He told them what not to do. And what do we do as people? We do exactly what He tells us not to do. And we did it. Understand this. Does the earth belong to Yahweh in the fullness thereof? All the planets and all that. If you believe that, where have we seen this before? He told them, He said, Israel, when you, I'm giving you this land, but if you don't occupy it according to my judgments and my statutes, my Torah and Deuteronomy, if you don't occupy it with that, and you allow all these foreign, the land will do what? The land will vomit you out. And if you're going to sit here and think that this land that we've owned, that the Father has blessed us with, and He blessed us with this land, He blessed people that was looking for religious freedoms, and we come over and established, and we were learning, and we're supposed to be getting better at it and walking out, and then we turn. You don't think that this land, if this land belongs to Him, you don't think this land won't? Let me ask you this question. What about Egypt? They were full of sin. Guess what? When their cup of sin was full, guess what happened to them? They got, they got knocked down. What about Nebuchadnezzar? Same thing. What about the Medo-Persians? Same thing. What about Rome? Same thing. What I'm saying is, is when the cup of sin is full, that's what he told the Canaanites. When that cup of sin was full, he gave that land to Israel. How do you think that we in America is going to, with the, with the debauch, the abominations that's going on today, how do you think that we're going to hold on to this land? There's only one way to do it. And that is to restore it back to the way it's supposed to be. That's the only way you're going to do it. Because if you don't do it that way, you can't be going back into a mixture. You can't just keep Hellenizing everything and thinking that he's, he's, going, to be, he's going to be good with it. Guys, we need to wake up that we're, going to, we're in this Maccabean type situation. Yes, Terry? I know I'm giving you all good news. So just, well, uh, just, a quick, just a quick comment. It hit me. The concept is this. They're trying to corrupt the seed, even, that was planted in our nation. It's always about corrupting that seed. It's always about the seed. Principle. Absolutely. Absolutely. And guys, I know I've made reference to this. We might as well get used to it because I'm going to keep referencing this because this is the truth. The thing about it is, I'm not... It To me, it's not about the unsaved that's in this land. It's about those who call themselves a believer of Yeshua or Jesus. I mean, they get saved. It's about this. And then when they turn around and, and, and say that these abominable acts, that we're, we're changing and we're going to embrace these things, guys, that ain't good. Because judgment starts in His house. I don't care what flavor you are, if you're vanilla believer or chocolate or strawberry or ne Neapolitan. It doesn't matter. The thing about it is, it starts with us. If you say that you have a covenant relationship, then guess what? If you love me, you keep my commandments. But then if you say you have this covenant relationship and you're saying, I won't keep your commandments, then you know what? Your, what, your words are useless to me because you have to walk out His ways. Restoration is on the Maccabees, they lost some people in their fight for what they knew was right, and it was the Torah. The best that they, they were very zealous for his word. Were they all perfect? Absolutely not. No. But Yahweh's doing something in this time and hour. He's been doing something with Hebrew roots. However you want to call it, Hebrew roots, Messianic, I don't, whatever. He's been doing something restoring for nations of people or Gentile people, which are, we're not Gentiles, we're grafted in Israel. He's doing something with us to take back what He has given us and blessed us with. But He's not only doing it here, He's doing it in Kenya. He's doing it in pockets all over the world because He's doing something this powerful. What I'm telling us is, is do not think that we will not suffer for righteousness sake. Because we have to make a stand. Because Satan is ticked off, evidently, with what's going on. But what does he do? He don't have to worry about the lost. He's got those. 
He has to change times in law with believers. He has to get believers in this book to say, you know what, I don't believe two-thirds of it. I only believe one-third. Well, that was a huge victory for him. Because now the Torah, the very essence, and now you look what we have, anything goes. And it's just morphed and morphed and morphed over all these years until where we are now. And now, exactly what I read you in Maccabees is exactly what's going down is law in this land. And we might as well wake up. Because this is what's happening, and this is why this story to me is so important. I just wish that people, and I'm not, I'm talking about people in Hebrew roots, would get their act together and understand that this is important, that we get this message out, because if you don't, you will repeat it, because guess what? When Antiochus, when he finally wrote this thing down there, he didn't exclude anybody. He said, all in Jerusalem and Judea will follow this. He didn't say, but this group over here, because I like you. He didn't give them a little out. Amen? Yes, Arnold? Yeah, grab that mic. I stirred your heart, buddy. This is actually something we're going to cover in the Torah class today, so I'm going to give you a little picture. I want to read it to you, because here is where all this is reflected this is from the very heart of our Creator King. This is found in Zechariah chapter 8, verses 9 through 17, but I'm only going to read a portion that concerns the seed. Okay? So says Yahweh of hosts, let your hand be made strong. You hear these things in this day. You're hearing it. That word is being proclaimed to you today. Wow. Words by the mouth of the prophets that in the day the house of Yahweh of hosts is founded, the sanctuary will be rebuilt. I'm going to say to you, don't worry about what the Temple Institute's doing. You worry and be concerned about what the creator of the universe is saying and doing. For before those days there was no payment for man, nor was there payment for animal, and there was no peace to him from the sanctuary or from the adversary who went out or came in, for I sent every man a man against his neighbor. And I really think he's talking about his people here because they rejected Yeshua. And there was no peace offering place for them because they rejected Yeshua. But now I will not be on the remnant of this people as the former days, says Yahweh of hosts. Here's the verse, 12. For there shall be peace for the seed. That's not just our seed. This is the Garden of Eden language. The vine shall give its fruit, and the ground shall give its produce, and the heavens shall give their dew. It won't be rain. It will be dew. Yahweh's restoring. He's taking us back to that place. Let's get on board and get free. Amen. So let's go to Acts 8. I'm going to read a little bit in Acts 8 and 9. We're going to head down about 10 minutes uh, with this right here. In John 15, I'm not going to read this, you can, but this is really all it's talking about where Yeshua is saying where the world hates you is remember that they hated me first. And if you're of the world, then the world would love you. If you're not of the world, then the world's going to hate you. So this sort of shows where you're at. You can't be straddling the fence. It doesn't work. But I want to use this as an example. All right, now this one in, in Acts 8, I'm just going to read 1 through 3. There was a guy named Stephen. Now, Stephen, uh, he was Jew or Gentile? He was Jewish, or he was Israelite. He was Hebrew, okay? Paul, or Shaul, is he Jew or Gentile? Okay, he's, he's from Benjamin, okay? So, it says this, And Saul, or Shaul, approved of his execution. So, the very thing that Yeshua was warning them about, about brother against brother and all of this, 
I mean, he hadn't been resurrected long, and this is happening because Shaul or Paul, who is a Benjamite, is now putting and witnessing Stephen and putting him to death because of his belief in who? Yeshua, okay, believing that the Messiah has come. So it says that he approved of his execution. And there arose on that day great persecution against the congregation in Jerusalem. In other words, all the people who's believing in Yeshua. And it says, And they were all scattered throughout the region of Judea, Samaria, except the apostles. Devout men buried Stephen and made great lamentations over him. But Shaul, or Saul, was ravaging the congregations and entering house after house and dragged off men and women and committed them to prison. Now, understand this. Paul knew the Torah. Paul, what Paul was doing, understand this, because this is, you got to get this. Paul thought he was doing right. Paul was very sincere. We talk about this phrase. Paul was very sincere about what he was doing. He was just sincerely wrong. This is where we have to be careful. We get sincere. We're still learning. We're sincere, but we can still be sincerely wrong. This is what happened with Paul. There's a lot of brother against brother. They're sincere about what they believe. They're passionate about what they believe, and they believe they're right. He believed that he was right so much that he was putting people to death. I mean, you you got to be pretty confident in yourself. If you believe that what you believe is that right, you're out there putting and ravishing and putting people in prison and killing them. You, but then when he found that he was sincerely wrong, you hear, his, you hear a very humble. So what am I saying? What I'm saying is, is in this occupying till we return, there's good people out there that's sincerely wrong. I was, at, I was sincerely wrong in my beliefs before, before I came into this. And you know what? I have still been sincerely wrong since then, but as the Father shows us through Torah how to walk, I throw away and then, then we walk in it. That's what we do. So we need to afford all of these others that are sincere but maybe sincerely wrong. We need to afford them. Maybe they may have a come to Damascus moment. That's what we need to pray that they have that moment because they may, because look what happened. If you would have just wrote Paul off, who writes... Most of the New Testament, the bread of Shah, he does in his epistles. So when you see this, now let's go to, and we'll finish up in Acts 9. Because I'm just giving you an example here in the Scripture where brother was against brother, is all I'm doing. It's really showing you that this is what's going to happen even in the end. Brother will still, we saw it in the Civil War. We talked about that as an example. You're going to still see it in the end. Ideologies, I don't know how, I don't want to know how, but it, but it just happens. Where how, do you, how all of a sudden did somebody stir up during the Civil War, during the 1800s, how do you stir that up to where cousins is killing cousins and uncles and, and, they, and they get mad? I understand. It's money, dude. Follow the money. But what did we have with COVID? You ain't coming to my house unless you get the jab. And, they, and you, you, you had all that fight. And you had people bickering. And I mean, it, it, what is, people is inciting people. It don't take much to incite a person to do wrong things, is all I'm saying. So, so here we have in chapter 9, verse 10, it says, and this is Paul's conversion now. Now, there was a disciple at Damascus named... Is that Ananias? Is that close? Okay. You know I'm bad with names. And Yahweh said to him in a vision, Ananias. And he said, Here I am, Master. And the Master said to him, Rise, go to a street called Straight. In a house of Judas, look for a man of Tarsus named Shaul or Saul. For behold, he is praying. Because that's what he would normally do anyway, because he was a Torah keeper. I mean, he's not like he was a heathen and praying something foreign to him. He knew how to pray. He knew how to do the evenings and morning prayers. He knew how to do the prayer. He knew how to do this. For he has seen a vision of a man named Ananias coming in and laying his hands on him so that he might regain his sight. 
And so Ananias said, if you want my opinion, you just leave him blind. That ain't what he said, was it? But I can tell you that's what most of us would have said. It is a good thing that he's blind, and it's a good thing he stays that way. But Ananias then, he says, Master, I have heard of many, many about this man and how much evil he has done to your saints in Jerusalem. And here he has authority from the chief priest to bind all who call on your name. Now, we're talking brother to brother here. We're not talking about nations. We're not talking about Rome. We're not talking about Alexander. We're talking about the chief priest even. There was a war going on here. But the master said to him, Go, for he is, chosen, he is a chosen instrument of mine to carry my name before the nations and before the kings and the children of Israel. That's our job. He has given us a mandate to carry His message. And carrying His message before the nations, before kings, before government officials, mayors, but also our Jewish brothers who we know that may not know Yeshua, may not know that Him is Messiah. He's given us a mandate. He's given us an authority to do that. But guys, all I'm telling you is, is when we're doing that, we will suffer for righteousness sake. Because when we tell our own Christian brothers that these things you ought not follow and these things you should, there's a battle. I don't know how many people that may be in here. Like I'm telling you, I'll just use myself. My mom's passed away. She's been passed away for, I think, probably three years. Love my mother dearly. And my mother loved me dearly. She did. And I loved her dearly. She lived three houses down. Fourteen years I pastored here. Never heard me speak. Because she was Baptist. And that's fine. I'm not saying, I'm just saying, but she was, now she would come in Oneg. She would come in fellowship. She would come eat that sanctified chicken and all that. But in her mind, where she was at, and I love her, and I'm telling you, because she, she just didn't understand. She only knew a, she knew a system. She did. She just knew. Now, she knew you people. She knew you people loved her. And she knew that. But she just, for whatever reason, I don't know if she thought that she was going to come here. She was going to lose her once saved, always saved. I don't know what was going to happen to her. I don't, but she was just, but you know what, really and truly, it, it, it really, I didn't go to seminary. I don't have a doctorate degree. I don't even have a degree, except maybe a temperature. But other than that, that's all I got. You know, I worked in, in oil fields, I was an electrician, air conditioning guy, and this, that, and the other. Was an elder for many years and was mentored under Tammy and Sandra Nim's dad. And a very, very godly individual. Learned a lot of things, patterns, and principles. But guess what? He passed on. And when we first started coming into Hebrew Roots, and then I had other mentors, you know, with Bill and Brad and Halisa and a lot of these other ones that I read and I study under, and found some good, solid people. And this is why I always say, find good, solid people to study under. Because there's a lot of stuff out there that's just chasing stuff. And, um, but, but, well, I'm just saying, it's just, but I love my mom, and my mom loved me, but I don't understand, and she just couldn't do it. But you know what? I told her, that's okay. Because I just knew where she was at in her walk. It was just, just the way it is. But I had to love her where she was at. We have to love people where they're at. But, you know, hopefully and prayerfully, there are people that's going to make a change, and they're going to say, you know what? The Father's draw. If the Father doesn't draw them... I don't, you can salt oats, you can waterboard them, you can do whatever, they ain't coming. They just ain't coming. That's right. He has to draw them, and I knew that. And, and so, you know what? The only way you're going to get people is to love them and to love them and to, to be patient. And I'm glad people was patient with me. Because I will tell you, when we first got into Hebrew Roots, I was almost like, this is some wacky people. This is some wacky, wacky. That was the wacky of the wacky. That was like wacky mole. 
You know, every time you get on the goddamn, I'm just saying. But the we but we didn't give up. We didn't give up. We said, Father, we know this is right. We know your ways is right. Help us dodge the hammer for the wacky moles. But the Father did, and He was faithful, and, and this is what has is, is happened. And I believe He's doing something powerful in this land today. He just is. Because of Him, not because of us. If He delivered the Maccabees, He can deliver us. But we have to have the mindset, like you say, we have to think free. We have to be free. He had to deliver us out of Egypt so that we could do what He called us to do. And we have to make sure that we don't fall. But a mixture puts you right back into bondage, is all I'm saying. So anyway, that's all I got for today. I hope you're blessed. I hope that I didn't rattle your cage too much. I know nobody likes the, the term suffering, but like I said before, when you look at it, the deal is, is in our life, I don't care, and I would just say it like this. Eternity, I mean, reality hits me. Life is short. And you're not guaranteed tomorrow. And we need to do what we need to do to impact the kingdom with our life today. Amen. Amen. Or right, let's pray. So, Father, we do just thank you for this portion. And I just pray, Father, that what you're doing for us in this time and season, that we will not try to blame other people like Antiochus, but we would look at our own selves, that, that the body of Messiah as a whole that professes to know you as Savior, that, Father, that we will have a spirit to be to seek you first, your kingdom and your righteousness. And Father, that we would hear what you would have us to, to follow the times and seasons that you proclaim in your word. And Father, if we can just do what you just simply ask us to do, not, not one group or another group, but all who profess to know you as Savior, to be able to get in this book and simply follow your ways. Would it be a powerful kingdom on this earth if we could do that? where people doing all over the world doing Sukkot and people all over the world doing Pesach, all over the world having Shabbat on a day. But because of not doing that, the abominations of things that happen will end up producing the fruit of Lot during his day, in the days of Noah, in the days of the Maccabees. It, it's just people, just we just need to wake up, Father, and I pray that we will be restored, that restoration, and if there's going to be a revival, that it would be a true revival. Not one of trying to go back to the 1600s or the 1800s, but Father, but to go all the way back to the first century and let Yeshua just teach us and let the apostles teach us in their words where Acts, the book of Acts, just reading it, shows you what we were doing. There were no change times during that time. So Father... We praise you. We lift you up. Bless your people in the time that we're in. And may we be mindful in these seasons to learn what you have us to learn. And for those of us who have an ear, may we hear what your Spirit is saying in Yeshua's name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, guys. All together, sound the great shofar for our freedom. Raise the banner to gather our exiles and gather us together from the four corners of the earth. Praised are you, O Yahweh, who gathers in the dispersed of your people, Israel. Amen. Prayer for the United States of America all together. Abba, Father, giver of life, we pray for and entrust the United States of America to your loving care. You are the rock on which this nation was founded. You alone are the true source of life, liberty, and blessings. We cry out for this land to be reclaimed for your glory. May it be that you will dwell among your people. Send your spirit to touch and open the hearts of our nation and its leaders to seek your will and your ways. Grant us the ability and courage to stand for the truth, and may we be that righteous nation you have called us to be. We ask this in the name of Yeshua, our Messiah. Amen. Amen. Psalm 122, prayer for the peace of Jerusalem all together. 
I was glad when they said to me, Let us go to the house of Yahweh. Our feet are standing within your gates, O Jerusalem, Jerusalem that is built as a city that is compact together, to which the tribes go up, even the tribes of Yahweh, an ordinance for Israel, to give thanks to the name of Yahweh, for there thrones were set for judgment, the thrones of the house of David. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. May they prosper who love you. May peace be within your walls and prosperity within your palaces. For the sake of my brothers and my friends, I will now say, may peace be within you. For the sake of the house of Yahweh our Elohim, I will seek your good. The ironic benediction. Your heir Adonai, Panavaleka, Vikuneka. Ye saw Adonai, Panavaleka, Veyosem, Lika, Shalom. May Yahweh bless you and keep you. Amen. May Yahweh cause his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. Amen. May Yahweh lift his countenance upon you and give you Shalom, peace. Amen. And it's time again for the Kiddush, the blessing over the wine. Baruch Adonai, Eloheinu melech haolam, Borei pri hagafen, Amen. Blessed are you, O Yahweh our Elohim, King of the universe, who creates the fruit of the vine, and for giving us Yeshua the Messiah, who said, I am the vine, you are the branches. And the blessing over the bread. Baruch Adonai, Eloheinu melech haolam, hamotzi lechem min haaretz. Amen. Blessed are you, O Yahweh our Elohim, King of the universe, who brings forth bread from the earth, and for giving us Yeshua the Messiah, who said, I am the bread of life. It is Shabbat, thank the Lord. It is Shabbat. 